Okay, uh, next up is Shift, book number one, Defender of Gallowind, a little bit adventure, written by J. Donald and M. Cross. Uh, it is uh, 356 pages, $4.99, so it is available in Kindle Limited. And here is the author's description. When was the last time a game started with a real-life gunfight? In the industrial wasteland of future America, Solomon Herrick spends his days wandering the streets and getting into trouble. Staying one step of the local PD, his life is mostly spent immersed in history and aimless exploring until Shift Online comes along. Whether that's a good thing or not is still up in the air. Shift 2.0, an immersive open-world RPG, just entered beta. And though Solomon Herrick isn't on the list, his friends knew a guy who could get them in. A chase and a gunfight later install is deposited in the world with nothing but a few rags on his back and a nearby stick to defend himself. With his friends gone, no knowledge of the game world, and zero guidance available, Solomon will have to rely on his ability to learn fast if he wants not only to figure out how to play the game, but figure out how to get out if he even can. And the rest of his shift is a game that literally series created by Mike Krause and Justin Bell, writing under M. Krause and J. Donald pen names. Um, so these are authors with a long list of stories, and this is their attempt at a little RPG. And it doesn't work for me. That's a short review, it really is. Um, this feels like a right-to-market novel where the authors just didn't get it right, unfortunately. Um, is this a little bit of story? Yes. It has stats. It has level progression. Uh, it is an RPG world. Um, but... Is it good lit RPG? Not particularly, at least not for me. Um, first, while the novel has static character sheets and inserted, um, they actually did this a really weird way when they did their when they did their information sending. Um, they use inserted pictures and graphics to show character sheets, novel descri or item descriptions, monster descriptions, and monster like character sheets. But then they repeated the information in plain text below it. And so essentially every time you get a novel description or an item description or a character description or um, character sheet, you're getting it twice every single time. And there's a lot of them. Uh, and and so it becomes really repetitive really quickly. Um, and there's there's several reviews on, this on, the, on the Amazon side for, for, for that particular characteristics being kind of annoying to, to some readers. Um, so And also this is an unfortunate case that sometimes the information between the um, static graphic and the actual text below it doesn't match. And that's, I'm like, oh, that's a source of numerical inconsistency for me. Like, oh, that's, it's always, it always bugs me when like numbers don't match or they don't make sense or like the math isn't working out. Uh, okay. Now, second issue I had, um, basically all the power of the main character gets is it feels unearned. Um, he literally gets dropped in this game after the, like this, um, cyberpunkish like beginning setting that you described in the novel description um and he merely gets befriended by some magical creatures that give him free weapons free armor a slew of magical special techniques that scale with his level and what i mean by that is that he he's literally given an ability that gives him essentially free stat points when he activates it and it's not like it's a minor amount it's not like it's static either um he's essentially getting whole levels worth of free stats every time he uses it so at level three it's essentially giving him 12 free stat points, which is a, a little over two levels worth of free stats. At level five, he'll be getting 20 free stat points, which is four levels worth of free stats, essentially. Um, and and this is, it's one of those abilities that feels super broken. And it's and like it's one of those things that bothers me as, as a gamer and that like nothing comes for free in a video game. Nothing comes for free. Um, you always should be working for that. That's part of the reason that the RPG progression feels valid and useful because you you actually have to earn it uh in this case that and a lot of the free abilities and powers the main character gets just don't feel earned so it's hard for me to empathize or root to the main character because i feel like oh he's he's not really earning his power and he's not really earning the you know the, his successes in a way um and, and and that's not just included to like those abilities it's also just like levels like he literally goes from level one to level three within the first 10% of the novel just for kind of existing. And I could almost be okay with like the powers if he, if there was like a, a scene showing that he earned them, like he, he trains for months or weeks and he's going through a bunch of hard trifles and he, he's going through these uh, quests and experiences and that's how he gets these experiences and he gets these unique powers and abilities. But that's not what happens in the story. Instead, literally it's, it's like a paragraph that's kind of summarizes, oh, by the way, he did some training and, and one day later he now has all these things um, without again feeling like he actually worked for it, so I'm like, oh, that's that was just something that just dragged my enjoyment down immensely, um, and it kind of ruins the rest of the story because all those other future successes are based on on that kind of stuff, and it continues to happen in the story. Um, third, 
even though the game mechanics are there, they don't always feel like they matter to the story. And again, this is this is a combination of the sometimes incorrect numbers between like the static and the text images of, of like spell descriptions and character stuff. Um, but it's also just like the way that the numbers are reflected in the actual story. If you're going to use numbers in a Liberty story, they have to be accurate and they have to actually reflect it. So if you have a character who's only invested um, like two stat points into his character, but he's, he's one shotting um, a bunch of monsters who are like two or three times his level, it doesn't match up. It doesn't really reflect the actual investment that he has made in those character ability traits. And gamers are going to notice. They're going to notice that, oh, these things don't really match. It means that this game mechanics that you're using, the numbers don't really matter to the actual story because you're just going to wand wave your way through your fights. And that's what happens in the story, unfortunately. And it's just again, one of those things like, oh, you can tell that the authors really made some effort in like including game mechanics and like going through all their stories and through their fight scenes and, and making sure there was character sheets and item descriptions, all that's really there a lot. But if it doesn't really reflect the reality of what's the gaming experience that the general audience has of like oh, being a little character and fighting something two or three times your level, it, it's, it's not going to feel genuine. And that's what happens in this story, unfortunately. Um, now, story-wise, um, it's kind of average. If, if, if I ignored the game mechanics portion of this thing and I was just looking at just the story aspect, it would probably still get a 6 out of 10 for me just because the story itself is just not engaging. Um, it's mostly like a cyberpunk beginning, getting the main character in the game, very skippable. Um, and then once he's in the, in, in the game world, even though he's supposed to be quite concerned with finding his friends who are also supposed to be stuck here somewhere, um, it's just a slice of life adventure where he's going on a bunch of, there, there's quests there, but they're really just excuses to get him into more fights where that he kind of magically wins. Um, and eventually, even though he does contact his friends again, he gets some of them, um, the rest of it's meant, I'm, I'm assuming for the rest of the series, even those fights are just like, oh, it's, it's like, oh, these feel... I want to say cheap, but they, they do sort of feel that way because, again, the powers are unearned or, like, they have special abilities and just items that are overpowered because they exist. Like, there's no earning of them for these characters. So, like, their victories um, over, like, overwhelming odds don't feel as special and they don't feel earned uh, in a way. So, that, that that was super frustrating for me in this story. Um, overall, the technical writing is fine. Um, there's no, like, spelling or grammar errors here. These guys are professionals. They have literally dozens of novels to their credits under, like, different pen names. Um, they have good descriptions, good character descriptions, um, some even attempts at world building that are decently fine. The action in the story is probably the best part of it in that the fights feel very action-y. It's just that, they, again, they're not reflective of the game mechanics. Um, but the story just kind of seems, again, to exist to get you the next fight. And the actual RPG side of things was a big fumble for me. And that's kind of why I didn't actually like the story. Um, it, again, the story by itself, six out of 10, which is like, oh, it didn't work for me. But including that, the game mechanics that didn't feel like they mattered, um, numbers that just weren't accurate, um, and not really reflecting the RPG mechanics as, as an integral part of the storyline, and that they're ref actually reflected in the story um, sometimes. Like, that was all just like, oh, no, this is, I, I can't deal with this. This is not enjoyable for me. I don't like this. And so it gets a score of four out of 10. That's Shift, book number one, Defenders of Galloway, uh, with the score of four out of 10.